Good morning, church. This is Pastor Janetha Rice Singleton. And today we're starting a new sermon series titled Healing, the Power That We Find in Brokenness. There's this book by Greg Groeschel entitled Dangerous Prayers. And in this book, Greg talks about the danger of praying. So there are prayers that's dangerous to pray. And one of those prayers that he talks about um, is praying for God to break us. Paul, Craig tells about meeting with one of his mentors, and he was sharing with his mentor that he's preparing to plant a new church. And Greg is all excited about this new church and what the response will be from his mentor. And during this conversation, his mentor, he paused for a moment and he tells Craig that, I have one promise for you. And Craig's waiting anxiously for the next sentence that will come out of his mentor's mouth. And then his mentor said, God will break you. And so Craig is wondering, well, what do you mean? Why would God want to break me? That's a dangerous prayer to ask God to break us. Why would we want God to break us? And Craig goes on to say that later on, as he began to do the work in planting this church, he began to understand what his mentor was actually telling him. He was telling him how he would be broken. Sometimes we have to be broken of ourselves, broken from our selfish ways, broken from friends and family members, and even broken from churches so that God can fully use us to do what he has called us to do. And so in this sermon series, we're going to look at brokenness. We'll start with Jeremiah, the second chapter, and look at the prophet Jeremiah and the brokenness of Israel. And then we will look at Gideon and his weakness, and we'll see where it is broken in that story. And we'll move to that broken bottle of perfume in the Gospel of Mark. There is power in brokenness. And one of the greatest and brokenness that I can recall is how Jesus' body was broken for us. And it speaks of it in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. On that night when Jesus ate with his disciples, when he took the bread and he broke and said, this is my body that was broken for you. Do this as often as you can. And when you do it, think of me. Jesus' body was broken broken for us, for our sins. But there was power in that brokenness. And so today we're going to look at Jeremiah, the second chapter, which reads, Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be shocked by utterly desolated, the Lord says the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and have done dug cisterns for themselves, crack cisterns that can hold no water. See, in Jerusalem's cisterns, they kept people alive in these hot summer months. Water was a symbol of, of life for them. And in the cistern, it, it collected water. They were dug in rocks, and they collected rainwater, and they were covered with plasters. Um, and these pits, they represented life for the people. But we also see in Jeremiah, where the prophet Jeremiah is telling them that God is the living water. You see, these, these cisterns that they built for themselves, they were cracked. And so if they are cracked, they cannot hold water. The water would, 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 would leave and there would be no water for them. And so the cracked cisterns were used as tombs for dead people, that's where they would put the dead people. But the Israelites, they built, they built these, they dug these for living water, and God was not pleased with what they were doing. How can they go to a crack cistern for water? How can we go to an area where there is nothing to feed us or to nourish our bodies? The Israelites, they were a disobedient group of people, and always doing things against God's will. 
and they had these idols, and they thought that this cistern would, would be their supply, would be the source. And Jeremiah warned them that this was not, it would, it would not work. This would not be sustainable for them. Before the, for the water, if it rained, when it did rain, the water would go in, but then it would seep out. No nourishment. It's like pouring something, pouring water into a glass that has a hole in it. There's no substance. But in God, we find substance. God is the living water. God is the true being of the source where all of our nourishment comes from. We are to look to God for the nourishment, not idols. You know, we all have idols in our lives, these things that we depend on, that we build, we surround ourselves with. It could be drugs or alcohol, uh, food, political parties. We build ourselves around them and depend on these things to fulfill certain areas in our lives. But only God can quench the thirst and fulfill those areas in our lives that may be broken. I remember years ago, actually in the late 1960s and the early 70s, we didn't have running water at my home. And we would go to my grandmother's house. In the front of my grandmother's house, there was a pump. And we would take water and pour it into the pump and pump it to catch water to supply us for that night. And then the next day, we would, we would repeat the same thing. We would take jugs and buckets so that we could have water to supply us for our washing, cooking, whatever we needed water for. And so as I thought about these cisterns and that pump in my grandmother's yard, how it provided the nourishment, that spring water, the, the, that provided the spring water that we needed. And when that pump area, when that area ran dry, my dad and my uncle, they would move the pump to another location and, and then we would be, begin pumping water again. And that would last for a couple of years or sometimes just a few months. With God, we don't have to move. God is always there with us. God knows where to supply what we need and when we need it. But sometimes in that brokenness, God shows us and we understand then that we need God. You know, the brokenness is there sometimes to help us to understand that God is the one that will mend us. God is the one that will provide the things that we need, that living water, that substance that will nourish us. God will provide the things that we need. You know, we don't need the idols. The Israelites, they didn't need the idols because God was there and the living water was there. But they wanted to take it upon themselves to build these things, to dig this hole. And it was cracked. There are things in our lives, and sometimes that are cracked also, that are broken. And we try to fix it ourselves. I've learned from experience that I should turn it over to God and let God fix it because he is the one that mends it and God is the living water. God is the one that will supply all of the things that we need. Through the Holy Spirit, God left us reassurance that he is the living water where we would thirst no more. So as we look at these scriptures over the next several weeks and we think about brokenness and we wonder, well, how could there be power in brokenness? How could anyone ask to be broken and still survive. We don't, you don't want to hurt. You don't want to be hurt. But sometimes we have to be broken and reshaped so that we can do God's will. You know, it's just like carrying something that we, that we know that's detriment to us. Or, you know, suppose you, you're, I've heard of someone once who they couldn't walk because their leg, it was twisted and they went to see the surgeon, and the surgeon said that I can fix that broken leg where you can, I can fix the leg where you can walk, but I have to break the bone. And she was afraid of the pain that she heard that would come through as a result of the broken bone. But after through much prayer and trust in God, she decided to have that bone broken so that she could walk straight and walk, actually walk upright. And I can say today, that bone was broken. It caused pain, but she's a living testimony, and she's walking 
straight and even walk running at times. So yes, there is pain when we're broken, but there's power in brokenness. And so that's what we will be talking about for the next several weeks. We'll look through the scriptures and look at texts about brokenness and how we can find good things or good things does come out of brokenness. So stick with us and be with us over the next several weeks as we continue to talk about brokenness, the power that we find in brokenness. Have a lovely day. God bless you. Will you pray with me now? Oh God, we thank you for the brokenness in our lives, those imperfections, and sometimes we just don't understand why. But God, we know through it all that you, are, you will make us perfect and whole again. So we thank you now for all that you've done and all that you continue to do to show us in our imperfection as we move towards perfection. In your name we pray, amen. 